Welcome back to PYoungMinistry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Today we continue our study of the gospel according to Mark. We're in chapter 14, verses 32 through 36, which reads, They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. That's Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 36. Today we return to Mark chapter 14, where the Lord Jesus has just told his disciples that after his crucifixion, they will all run for their lives. In so doing, they will deny their association with the Lord. In response, all of the disciples pled that they would never abandon the Lord. Of course, the Lord already knew their hearts and their actions. And this is why we love him so much. He knows us better than we do ourselves. And yet, he is still committed to us. In verses 32 through 34 of today's passage, we read, They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Gethsemane comes from two Hebrew words, meaning the olive press. In those days, olive oil was made by taking two stones, an upper stone which would revolve around the lower stone, and anything between the two was crushed. When the olives were crushed, the oil that came forth was gathered and collected and sold. The real value of the olive comes from its crushing. You can eat the olives, but the real value is discovered in the crushing of the olives. This is yet again another picture of the economy of God. The Lord Jesus came to this earth to be crushed for the forgiveness of our sin. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, we read, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. The Lord Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him while he prayed. He left the other eight at the entrance of the garden, but he took Peter, James, and John deeper into the garden because they were leaders. Interestingly, there were two other occasions when this inner circle joined the Lord Jesus exclusively. The first was at the house of Jairus when the Lord raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead. The second was on the Mount of Transfiguration when the Lord Jesus was transfigured before Moses and Elijah. There the Lord Jesus spoke with Moses and Elijah about his departure. All three of these instances have something in common, and it is death. And here in today's passage, the Lord Jesus presented himself to the Father for death. I also find it interesting that the very first Christian martyr was James, and the last was John. The middle one was Peter, who would be crucified upside down in Rome. According to verse 33, the Lord Jesus was deeply distressed and troubled. 
The word distressed is a compound form of the verb to be amazed. Even though he was omniscient, death was an experience that he had never had, and he was about to have it. He was amazed because death was totally alien to everything he had ever experienced and had ever known. And death caused him to be troubled, meaning to be astonished. The Lord Jesus was deeply amazed and astonished in his anguish. He possessed something that we have never known with reference to sin. He had a perfect hatred for sin. Everything in his being was repulsed by the thought of it. His plea to avoid it was absolutely consistent with his nature as God. As indicated in verse 34, the Lord Jesus was overwhelmed with sorrow, which literally means to be surrounded by sorrow. He was engulfed in this grief to the point of death. He had never said yes to alienation from his father. He had never said yes to guilt. He had never said yes to sin bearing. He had never said yes to punishment. His anguish was caused by the cup of God's wrath, which he knew awaited him on the cross. And he struggled with the idea. It bothered him so much that he asked the Father for a way out of it. In verses 35 and 36 of today's passage, we read, Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Peter, James, and John went deeper with the Lord so that they would be taught how to pray amid weakness. James and John were the ones who were so confident they thought they ought to sit on the right and left hand of the Lord Jesus in his kingdom. And Peter thought of himself to be the most elevated and exalted of all. Given their strengths, they needed to be reminded of the place of weakness in effective leadership. We are at our strongest when we are most convinced that we need God. We are at our strongest when we're most dependent upon him. The Lord Jesus referred to the Father as Abba, which is a very intimate word meaning Daddy. No Jew would ever even consider calling God Father, but Abba? But our Lord calls on the affectionate, intimate, personal name of God as if pleading for that intimate love to rescue him. And notice the way the Lord Jesus prayed was to request of his daddy and then rest in his response. This is the way we should pray, to request and rest. The Lord Jesus submitted to the will of his daddy. In his human nature, he felt anxiety, but in the end, he said, yet not what I will, but what you will. The Lord Jesus submitted himself to whatever the Father wanted because he knew the character and nature of his daddy, that he could be completely trusted with the outcome, even though he struggled with it. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you with your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.